I think I'll just get the live stream going and get people in here too.
Excellent, thank you, Vince.
Um, I, yes, I believe so. So you want to start with that, you mean? I see Mr. Kesh is there now. Good morning. Okay, so should we give the official beginning? <laughs> Okay, and we're running on live stream. And let's make the announcement. It's the 85th Knowledge Seekers Workshop of the Keshe Foundation Spaceship Institute. Excuse me. It's, it's October 29th, 2015. And uh, uh, we're in the middle or toward the end of the um, week with these power systems and the teaching for the blueprint this week and uh, today we'll have some presentations from some people that are working on those systems as well as other uh, teachings from Mr. Kesh. So I think we're ready to go there. Go ahead Mr. Kesh. Good morning, good evening, good day to you as usual wherever and whenever you listen to this presentation. Uh, today is a uh, part of the blueprint day and part of the workshops, normal Thursday morning workshops, which has been done for nearly over a year and a half. Um, today we're trying to see what's the next step to complete the blueprint. There is a um, people who have already produced some things and they have made the rings. I have to tell you and warn you to make sure that your rings are fully nano-coated and fully um, put into GANS material and dried properly. If you don't have a full cover GANS on your rings, you'll find out your system will not operate. So if you are not sure, put the system through the GANS liquid for a second time to make sure is fully covered because without it, the nano layers do not interact. The next step of the development of the 
blueprint to be able to add the system into or connect it to the main is that if you connect your system which you have already done the three stack I'm monitoring all these speakers workshop live stream. Well, there's probably no because there's thousands of people on the knowledge seekers workshop probably that's the one that i've already announced i believe so i'll, I'll make an announcement on the other side there um we'll try to redirect them thanks vince so what we've seen and what we said your system at the moment should be on three stacks what you did or what you should have done by now you should have had your central rings and you had your outer rings it doesn't want to undo okay doesn't matter okay so you have your second ring and what you should have done by now you should have connected somewhere here from your central gravitational and you would have had a line out on the top end where this would have been the negative or in a way input to the tower and this would have been what goes out of the tower <coughs> you connected the positive end of this to the negative end of that and positive end of this to the negative point of that and you should have got something like this out now you have a unit like this but to be able to connect it to a power supply we have a lot of ladies talking here when they come it's a good attack outside so we have to carry on in a way that this unit can be added to power supply from one end and can be connected to the load on the other end. To connect the stacker to be in correct condition, you need to add your system in two new ways. And you need a connection to your power supply. If you connect as it is, your response power will not be that good and the power supply can be erratic. So what you need to do is to add two units into the system. One unit here, across the three plates and one unit across the load or power supply. These units, what we call panel capacitors, are essential. Otherwise, you will not create the condition to filter the system into plasma as you need it. So, what you need to do, you need at a point where you connect your line or of the gravitational point of the first plate and the magnetical point of the last plate, you need to put four 
plasma capacitors in parallel with the load. This allows you to push the power and get synchronicity out of the cell. You need the same set of five plasma capacitors in parallel with the power supply too. This way, the system responds totally on a balanced state. You need five, or here in the power units which we deliver, you have four. But five is much more practical. It's much easier to handle the power supply. So you made a stacker. Now you need to make yourself eight or nine capacitors, plasma capacitors. In Philippine, they are using conventional capacitors in that series. In Italy, we have used uh, plasma capacitors. How you make a plasma capacitors is extremely easy. What you do, you take one of those nano um, bars which you made, you take a fire resistance paper, fire resistance paper for you can do at home is the papers you use for baking which you put at the bottom of the oven that they don't burn. You take the paste which we asked you to keep and all you do, you there are videos of this on the internet how to make capacitors. So all you do, you add a small amount of the cans in a paste and all you do is rotate it or put it anti-clockwise. It's important to understand anti-clockwise into the paper. Then you see that what you need to do now is to produce if you have done it, to make small coils which are tight enough that what you can do, again, anti-clockwise, you have to look in the direction of the position and you put the tissue paper with a capacitor inside. This is a simple plasma capacitor you make and you secure it and tighten it with insulation. This has to be insulated. So what you do, this should be totally tight, so you increase the tissue papers, and it has to be secured that it stays in position. This what you put in, the, the simple wire, this is your negative point, your entry, and the other side of the coil is your exit. The way you position is the single piece wire gets connected to the to the line in parallel with each other. So what you'll have is four of these sitting in line with each other and you connect all the negatives together, all the positives together using the wires you had, which you now have coated, and you connect them as one unit to the live line of your wire. If you make these two units, these two stacking units of parallel capacitors, you make another four for here, 
on the same position, negative and positive to the line. So now what you need to do to build this capacitor unit. These capacitor units are the key into being able to transfer the AC into a plasma capacitor into plasma condition power. The units which are given to the government carries only one capacitor and they could be dried up but if we can replace it or a unit will be sent to them because we've seen problem with a couple of them that they dried up in production. So the units are working but they don't perform the way they should do. That's what happens. If you don't get a power unit out of your units when you receive it, this is the only point that the capacitors could be not working. But in the production, it has been looked after that this doesn't happen. So you have a very straightforward system with capacitors. So when you look, this is your wire, the simple wire. You added a, what you call the GANS. You covered it with a tissue paper of fire resistance. And then you added a anti-clockwise, it's to do with my ring. Then you added an anti-clockwise coil on it. This is the negative point. This is the positive point. You put it in parallel with a line of power. I explained to you. Once you made it and is in that set, what you're going to have is that's the coil and you need four of them. or five of them and this was your center line the single wire which came in you connect the wires together this way you connect these four together and you get a line from it so now you made four parallel this stays your negative and this is the easy positive. So this is what sits there or sits there. Then the final stage when you made your parallel sets is connecting the final piece. The final piece will look like this. You have your stacker unit with the three stacker on it the wire has come out there and you have a wire here this is the end of this cable where you plug in your plug in your wire to the power has a neutral and a live line. So what you do, you cut into the live line, you cut the live line, you connect the negative of the system to it here. So what it is, your connection the interface is on your live to the negative. Your capacitor has been set here. The capacitor set of the four sits along here.
you have put a capacitor set here. You have put a capacitor. Uh, you have put a capacitor. What's happening? It's jumping. You have put a capacitor set along here. You connect. Then your load to here. This is this wire. This wire which comes to the plug gets connected here. And your other wire gets connected back here. So, this is your full set power unit. You connect this to a plug into the low, into the power supply and this is your load. This is your power supply, and this is your load. This is a total structure for a power supply. This is the total blueprint. As I said by today, we complete it, and if you have managed to complete this, you should be able to connect Make sure there is no moisture in your capacitor. It's dry enough, otherwise you get the sparks. And you can connect it to the load. What we've done, we have added a thermometer measurement system somewhere here, where if the wire gets heated, you get breaking of the circuit. Which means you cannot pass 2 kilowatt. So, you have a safety that if you overload on this side, the line heating up the your coil will disconnect you from the main. You cannot damage the system. It's set at 55 to 60 degrees. You need it. You need to put a thermostat, thermometer at this point. This is what you have in the blue box. There is a possibility, very high chance. We are not pre announced it, but we have achieved what we are looking for the first step of generators. Maybe by tomorrow we might be able to confirm. We were looking for resonance vibration of the plasma, totally using a plasma condition. Uh, I was talking two or three o'clock this morning with our people, and we seem to start the system is working on a constant basis. So, if we push it within the next two or three weeks, and what we see is correct, in the coming weeks, most probably, you don't need this anymore. You become a self-sufficient power supply generator. Because to create the resonance, oh, the um, to create the resonance was the main uh, problem. We have, um, we seen that we have achieved it. It's just a matter of enhancing it to be able to do the job of the uh, supply resonance. And there's a possibility by tomorrow 
we announce a new development that you can extend the power of the unit to uh, further loads than two. Otherwise, we already have the unit, we found the solution, but if we see correct, we carry on the teaching of the, Monday I'm not here, we carry on the teaching of the blueprint to next Tuesday, Wednesday, till people make their units and collectively we can demonstrate. So, uh, it's not that just we finish, a lot of people are making a lot of pieces around, trying to get things together. So, on Monday, there's a possibility that we close. It's the 1st of November on Sunday. Some people would like to have a Monday off because of the 1st of November holidays in, in Europe. And if not, teaching carries on internationally. On Tuesday and Wednesday, we go back on the Blueprint Live that people can demonstrate their units. And by then, hopefully, if what we see is correct, we will introduce a new technology. If we, we think we are correct, we've seen it to be correct, that you can convert any resistor into a conduct, in a, what do you call it, non-resistive uh, supply, which means you can add heaters, all sorts of resist, non resistive material into the circuit, but the box will see it as non-resistive, which means you can add uh, two kilowatt, four kilowatt loads into the circuit. We have, we think, if you are correct, we have managed to bring that conversion in. It will be very small. It's the size of maybe three centimeter diameter, which you can actually add to your heaters, like as an extra component and the system doesn't see that resistive. And you can bypass it, so you can use it as a non-resistive load, but in the backup, in the background, is the heater element. This changes the whole structure. So we can go into the next step of mass production, small units that you can add, like adapters. You'll be more or less this size, very much. Uh, uh, we hope it can be done. The work is getting done in the background. All you do, for example, you add like adapter like this into your plug and you add the load, resistive load at this point. So the system doesn't see it. It looks more possibly can work, but if the, what we call cascading doesn't work, which, uh, what do you call it? It's too expensive. These can be marketed about five or ten euro a piece. You can add to your system a box around the house to add to it. At the moment, the people who are using this system in their houses, they report very simple conditions. Every time you plug in and plug out, you see a movement on your meter, but then it stops and it shows as total non-resistive load. So, in, when you run your systems, after a few weeks, you should be able to run a system, hopefully, non-resistive zero, resistive maybe 10-15% of the supply. But <coughs> it, what we see in our research comes correct. We should be able, hopefully, by next week, if it shows the preliminary condition, to announce the production of a generator, which takes you off the grid altogether. Um, it's three, four weeks now work has been done. And if, if the development completes, we bring it out as another Blue Day week, and we put it on that you produce generators, you become off the grid totally. This is what a lot of people have been asking for. You become generator. This morning, I was talking, working about two, three o'clock in the morning, it seems that the vibration we were looking for has been achieved. It's a, a slightly, it should take another unit like this, but if uh, the research completes and is, is done, as usual, we immediately bring it into production. What's it going to do, the way it is structured, there will be another unit like this next to it.
because it's, it's volume, it has to be done the correct way. And if it works, it'll be another unit next to this unit as its power supply. So, or we, all we do, we stack this up, double the size as one unit. The, as we said, this is a change in the structure, change in technology, and we have to go through all its ups and downs and learning new things with it. Be careful, as I said, when you make these capacitors, how you do it, different people, you can see it on the internet, how it's done. It has to be very tight. It has to be in touch, complete. It cannot be loose. And you have to make sure there is no water moisture in your capacitors. And then what we do, we have used a special capsulation in our systems to capsulate it. And uh, you have to do the same and make sure that the rings are slightly separate from each other. They don't touch each other. So the system, the unit is workable and the first unit for delivery has left the factory. They are on their way to you according to the what we've done, according to the first order, first delivery. So by Tuesday, hopefully, or by Monday, all the units which has been paid for should be on their way to your destinations. Be it the car unit, be it the power unit. By Monday, Tuesday of next week, the whole delivery will be completed. Any questions? Yeah. Yes, it has to be the same. On the load side, thank you very much for asking that question. For the load side, you still have to be careful in your point. The question was that on the load side, we have to watch for positive negative. The answer is yes. You have to, if you look inside this unit, if you can get close enough, Fabio, if you look close enough, you see there is a dot, a green dot, placed inside. That uh, it guarantees, it shows you, with the, with the power supplies, once you come out of the system, is irrelevant with your appliances, because our appliances are set to work either way. Except if you are like British system with the three plugs, three point pins. Most of the systems, you have to make sure the plug system is, but we've seen it. If you follow the plug system, it should be the same. One of the ways which is done now in the testing in the houses where it's tested is that it's in the blueprint, you will see it. This is your meter from the government. You have your um, lines coming out and then you, line, you have the lines coming from the grid. You connect this into the, what you call the live, uh, live wire. This is where your unit should go. You sit on the live line of the system. This manual is on the blueprint page. When you receive your unit, there's just one page on it with a link to the site where you have to look for instructions and connections. We are not producing any paperwork. You bought the technology on the internet. You should be wise how to use it. So you go on the internet to get the instruction how to use and just update it very rapidly. As it comes in, we update it. As we see things, we update it. And you can go to the blueprint page if you have problem with it. So you have one part which is for connection and if you are producing something else yourself 
you can put on the blueprint page. If you discover something new or different way that you see performance different way, send it to the webmaster of the Cash Foundation. This is what I found out. We put it, we add it to the blueprint page. So we collectively add to the knowledge. This is how it seems and what it is. In the car unit, this is the power unit. In the car unit, you connect the system into part of your engine and to your battery from the two lines which they come out of your system. The physical picture of this will be on the Magrav car unit to show you where to connect it. We will not supply or we will supply a single line wires where you can connect into the cigarette lighter or to the power system. As you receive your unit, you'll see how it has been set up or you can reset it yourself. So this is the total blueprint. Tomorrow, this is the copy of the key which was supplied to the ambassadors. Tomorrow morning, sometime tomorrow during the day, we load this on the internet. The way the patents were released, you saw this package being given to the ambassadors. Tomorrow we load this on the line. So if you're looking for a blueprint, the blueprint, this is a copy of the ambassador's key. There's some minor development, which we keep on adding to it. So we'll download this on the website. You can download it and copy it. Any questions? You're scratching your head. Mr. Kesh? Yes. This is Kel Al from America. Yes. I had a question or more of a comment, and it was concerning the cars, the car unit. I was actually uh, entertaining uh, a creative idea about taking um, nano coils and putting them on the starter, the alternator, and the, um, the battery to condition the car. Uh, okay. I was, I was, I was taking the, uh, I was taking coils and I was putting coils on the starter, the alternator and the battery of the cars. Yeah. In the form of conditioning the cars. And uh, we were also starting to uh, put a couple of nano wires inside of the gas tank and put a star formation uh, underneath the gas tank, glue it underneath the gas tank with uh, drops of Gans's. And I just wanted your comments on it. No comments. When I haven't tested, I can't tell you. It's like somebody walking in here yesterday and says, my gans was eaten by my dog. What can I do with it? He's laughing his head off. I don't know. I can't go to the dog and say, can I have it back? Are we Is it okay? It's still alive. But it's faster than before. The dog. Both of them. <laughs> <coughs> these are the tests you do so share the knowledge with us you got to be careful um, when we announce something here in the teachings people go and do it and then they say you told us this is what you said this is what you tested share it with us there are different people doing different tests there are people <coughs> who are um, adding um, gas material in, uh, in their batteries. There are people who are adding um, nanomaterials into the air filters. There are people who are connecting or nano-coating the spark plugs before they put it in. There's all sorts of activities goes on, you decide what it is, if it's better or it can change. We have seen uh, conditions as we see, as we learn, we share. But um, you'll find out 
that especially, for example, in your car system, batteries, power supply, there is no, um, there are no capacitors. You cannot put capacitors in a car unit. It has to be on a plate basis only because you change the power plasma. The battery supplies itself. We have no capacitors in these, or in some versions getting developed. We've taken out that because you don't need it. And um, uh, you have to consider case by case. Don't forget there is a research going on in the background. In the factory, literally, the guys are testing new things as it comes. In the next couple of weeks, uh, we'll release the way of new, uh, what they call soft filtering system. Once we test it, it will be released. Uh, there is a possibility that we will release a water unit in the next coming weeks. What it means, you can connect, if you are correct, you connect the power, the water unit to this system in and all you do, you can take physical water from the system. It's in development, and once it's completed, we teach it. So you can eradicate any. We have seen the possibility of creating of up to, this is at the moment, theoretically can be done, up to 800 liters of water per day. It's a huge amount of water. You can literally produce, if you put your system the right way, up to 800 liter absorption of the gravitational magnetic field from the environment into one system. But this is, at the moment, has to be quantified. If we achieve 80, we'll be happy. But theoretically, we see that kind of, uh, what do you call it, water production. Even if you can produce 10, 20 liters of water a day, it's a huge amount in what you call uh, the areas where there is a shortage of water. There's a lot of research is going on in the background, but as usual, we don't disclose our researchers, the developers, and uh, this is how the structure will work. As I said to you yesterday, uh, we gave the units to the ambassadors and the ambassador of Nigeria in responding. Uh, we have put her in touch directly with uh, Alex, they've tested their units. And yesterday, the ambassadors from Rome and Alex in Nigeria, they were spoken and they started the procedure for teaching and development of the technology in Nigeria as of this morning. Even though Alex has been teaching for the past week, 10 days there. So we see how each government takes it and how they use it, and how they evaluate it. Any questions? Any questions? Armon is so sad. It's OK. What we need to do is to be able to convert the knowledge very rapidly into commercial units. So we have done, we'll go to the next step, and we'll see how the other structure goes. The Keshe Foundation Japan, as a manufacturing is already set up, is started. So we've seen the Japanese gentleman who was with us from Japan in the Amazon meeting. They have put the things in motion to start manufacturing. And uh, we'll see the same thing in the, uh, hopefully in Germany in the coming weeks. Any questions? Uh, Francois uh, Philbon asks, uh, if I had one more double coil versus a three double coil in that system, what kind of extra power can I, can I expect to get from this? Pardon? If I had one more double coil in that system, what kind of extra power can I expect to get? What do you mean by double coil? You mean put one more on the stacker, make it four? 
Yeah, versus the three. You saw, you saw a tennis stacker with uh, Renan yesterday in the factory in, in the Philippines. It's stacker Indy or something, yes. Yeah, you can. There is assumption that you can increase the power, but there is an easier way to uh, to increase the power. There is what we call the cascading. We looked at it; it works perfectly. But um, we can discuss that tomorrow. I think for today, we have explained enough how you should be able to use your stacker unit as a power unit. Don't forget at the moment you are connected to the power. As we have achieved what we were looking for in a very soft way, we can expand it and develop it. Um, we, will, um, we will hopefully in the coming weeks release the power generator. And this is what most of you were waiting for. But till it's not done, tested correctly, we keep to the same system. Okay. Pardon? Pardon? Oh, there was somebody talking. Okay. Pardon? Is there a question at that end? See you on Monday. No problem. Any questions? Um, what is the what is the polarity of the capacitors in the power side and the other side? And the the, side? on the power side, the negative has to sit from the incoming. Let me dry my hand. I had gans on it. If you work so long with the gans, you taste it when you have it on your skin. The texture of your mouth changes. The polarity is you put it on the live line. You put the uh, negative side on the live line and the positive side on the neutral. It has to stay parallel in respect to the power. The uh, capacitor coils, how many turns would they have? Um, you can do up to tens, that's what we do. Someone asked, can we have the specs for the Philippines capacitors, please? Um, they are natural, it's about one and a half inch by four inches standard household capacitors. And they use four of them or five of them. It takes a huge capacity. I think if you have Renan on the line, maybe they've changed to plasma capacitors too. Renan, are you there? Can you see yes. him online? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What was the question? I asked, have you changed to household capacitors or are you using plasma capacitors in your system? Uh, right now, sir, we're still yeah, yeah. using the house, uh, the conventional capacitors and some plasma. For the new, new units that are setting up, uh, we're making the plasma capacitors. But for the first units that are coming out, that are in production, are, we're using the conventional first. So we can uh, sell already the existing designs. But we will be upgrading to plasma capacitors for the new sets that we'll be making. The smaller one. The smaller type, the same as the uh, Magra power design, the, a, a smaller type of the design. Because most of our designs are mm. large, large, 2.2 kilovolt and 3.4 kilovolt, kilovolt setups. So they're wall-mounted devices connected to the breakers. So the next designs will be using the plasma capacitors already. So it will be a tabletop, the same as the Magra Power, the blue unit there, a small one. Let me explain something or uh, ask you something. Um, the the yes, stacker sir. unit, the stacker units you are using, you still use 160 and 80 rotation. On the yes, sir. Uh, num the number of turns? Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. 
Thanks very much indeed. Um, he's trying to tell you something in the background. Um, some of the wires is number 12 American Migrant. Uh, so we're, we're using uh, larger wires right now, sir, that in gauge 12. What is available right now, we are using gauge 12. We're having mm -hmm. trouble getting smaller wires. So we're using the gauge 12. You're using what? Gauge 12. Gauge 12, what is available? Are you using the circuit breakers for temperature? Circuit breakers, yes. Yes, sir. We still use the circuit breakers. Pardon? That is available here. Okay. It's bigger. It's gone to 12. They can't find a 14. So, in some tests, we go down to 16 in the diameter to reduce. <coughs> There's a mixture of things which is getting developed. Uh, what is going to be a problem now is finding manufacturers who can produce to meet the demand of this uh, virus. We already are feeling it here in Italy to be able to produce 100,000 units a week uh, with a recession in Europe in such a long time for six, seven years. Manufacturers have to gear up to produce. So, okay. see that. Thank you very much. Anything else you can teach us? All right now, sir. We're just discussing here in our in the laboratory right now about we have our new classmates here, so new recruits. So they are here. I'm teaching basics of uh, guns making. How many people have you employed, or do you employ there now? Uh, we're just still in the factory, sir. We're using the existing manpower of uh, uh, Moises. So he has the existing manpower with his existing business. So the yeah. same people are using. So we're just uh, keeping it uh, safe level. So we have, so we they work also over time doing the units as well. Uh, okay, thank you very much indeed. Can we have a look at this pen of yours you made? Do you have one? What, sir? The pen. The pens. Okay, I'll get one, sir. They, they produce a beautiful uh, <coughs> paint pens. Here, sir, I, here's the pen. I'll Can we share a screen? Yes, uh, I'll share videos. Yeah. We are getting it. Okay, is my video coming? I think it's your dogs have too much CO2 Yeah, the dogs here. Okay, here. We have a post. This is the... Still, I'm in the factory. Yeah, so this one is the casing, sir, that we are making is a wall. It's a big one at the back. This is your power supply. Yeah, this is power, really power supply. What is the kilowatts on this? How many kilowatts are to maximum? Seven? Seven point five. Seven point five, sir. Maximum seven point five. Seven point five kilowatt. Yes. Okay. Yeah. It's for bigger house, medium, medium house houses here and uh, some buildings who, who consume. So most of the market right now, our existing market are already buildings. So those will be the first one who can be purchasing and will be making small ones for the people that we will be giving away for the houses. for the sale. So we'll, we'll sell it to the bigger clients first. Then we give free to the one who cannot afford. Okay, so this is your seven and a half kilowatt power unit? Yes, sir. How yeah. many stacker unit do you use on this? Only three, still three, but maximum of nine, maximum of nine uh, three to nine uh, coils, set of coils. 
What do you mean? So from three, we can add six. Ah, nine. you're using a combination of one, two, or three stack and loaders. Yes, it will be three, uh, nine stacks with mm -hmm. uh, about 10 capacitors. 1.6 k bar in conventional rating. But when we get to hold with the existing plasma capacitor, eventually uh, we will replace this big bulky capacitors. This is the capacitor you use four of these or five of these. Yes. So we can go from five, three to ten capacitors for okay. industry. You see, this is a difference. If there yeah. we, we can share our camera with you, part share. Yes. These are the new plasma capacitors. It's okay. Can we have that? Can we still see? Can you show us? Yeah. These are your plasma capacitors. This is the plasma capacitors, the initial one that we have made and we tested it already. And this was so the we combined combination. We combined this. This is the first one we have tested the coil and with this capacitor, which stops some of the meters that we have connected. So, okay. so we have yet produce. We're not yet producing the capacit the plasma capacitors because of the lack of guns. So, from now, maybe after a few weeks from now, we can make more on these capacitors because the conventional capacitors is expensive and has only has limitations for the rating. So we will eliminate eliminate the the limitations eventually if we're using this uh, plasma capacitors. How many turns are on your plasma capacitors? 13, sir. 30 turns? Yes, yes, yes. 30 turns, sir. 30 turns. Uh, gauge, 30 turns. gauge 12, we're using gauge 12, 30 turns on the outer coil. Okay, that's perfect. Thank you very much, Renan. And your medical unit, we can see in your hand, your pen. Yeah, this one, sir. Okay. Thank you very much, Renan. Okay. Thank you indeed. So you see the setup and the structure is the same. Now that um, uh, they have used to put everything in one load to achieve seven and a half, we already have loaded here seven and a half. You know what? We can go to fifteen. We can go up to 22 and up to 40 kilowatts. There's a procedure to do it. Much easier what they're doing in the Philippines, which we will teach how to do it with a very compact unit. So you can increase um, the power. You've got to realize one thing which will happen is do not plug your system in and go for the maximum to get whatever you got. You have to climatize your system in the house to achieve the total power. As I said, we are producing, hopefully, if it comes correct, which you think should be, to small units, but there is a way you can immediately increase the power consumption in the house to about 7.5 kilowatt to 10 kilowatt or 15 kilowatt. But uh, we leave it till tomorrow or next week. Once people have built the same first units, then we go into high power units. <coughs> the one thing which you will realize is, as we explained, tomorrow we will release the blueprint as we promised. And the blueprint carries Everything is updated. Even the blueprint has been updated since we've given it to the government. The power supplies and the units are extremely important to be connected the right way. If you don't connect it right away, every unit before leaving the factory here in Italy is getting tested. They go through a test for a couple of hours to see the drop in the <coughs> into the system, and if it is, and it shows the drop, the system gets sent out. So we test every unit. It's been done, and 
That's how we submitted things for certification. Uh, Any Mr. Kesh, there's someone that, uh, that, that answered part of their question, but they also ask if you can show one being tested or running. Pardon? They're asking, um, uh, well, they want to know if any of this, uh, the units being sold or tested before they're sent, and you just- Yeah, answered. that's what I just said. Yeah, and then they say, can, if yes, can you show one being tested or running? Pardon? Can you show one of the units being being tested or running? This is in the factory, not here. We don't test it here. The factory is uh, nearly a thousand kilometers away from here. Any other question? There's a question, what kind of GANs are the Philippines uh, people using? You can use any kind of GANs. Whatever you produce in a structure, it stays as a GANs. You've got to realize, this is what I just had a discussion before this morning, and I had this discussion for a long time with the people in the university and then with the nuclear people in Belgium. When you collect the material, what they only see when they test, happens here with the Italian nuclear center in their report. So we explained to him, is that they see the property, for example, of CaCO3. But when they test it in Raman spectroscopy, they see the property of CO2. And they say there is no CO2. But because of the calcium in the water, it manifests itself chemically when you look, there is no gas property, they look at it as a matter. But when you look at it in Raman spectroscopy and infrared spectroscopy, you see CO2. And all the scientists at the moment, they look at this, they say it's not gas, it's just a uh, calcium, you know, what you call it, COC3. And we have it, when I explain it to the nuclear physicists here in uh, Italy, when they test it, said yes, it's correct because they don't have a system or they only look for chemical reaction because they see a material, but this is not. We just had this discussion with the people who are testing in Armenia. They don't, they don't have the expertise and they just look at the matter of state of the property. They have to be explained what to do and when then they see the property of what is there because most of the waters have calcium in it and this is the major pitfall they do. And then you see like um, what you call nickel uh, or cadmium, again, oxygen-based. But when you test it, Raman spectroscopy, you see property of superconductors. They have to be taught. They use it chemically and they don't see it. And they say, this is what we see. You have to explain to them, you have to test all the nanomaterials on a Raman spectroscopy infrared, because they see the matter, they add chemicals into it, they treat it like a chemical combination, and this is the failure. When they do the Raman spectroscopy, then they see the property of the superconductors. This is what we have to teach to the scientists, otherwise they say there is nothing new. Yeah. Pardon? Yes, if the, your dog doesn't eat it. He says when he builds his capacity, just wait. Yeah. It's the same, doesn't matter. What's the question? Okay, um, I repeat the question. Um, when I build my capacitors, um, the pin, the inner pin, I suppose is gauge 14, but the outside coil, is uh, another gauge? No, it's the same. Try to use the same wires for, for everything. And how many terms? We use 10, Philippines use 30. Okay, thank yeah? you. Yeah, it just, you see in the size of it. <coughs> it's, uh, it's a different way of doing it. I'm sure other people will come up with their own ways of doing it. There is a way to do it because now, we have developed um, plasma batteries. 
in the coming days we're going to show you plasma batteries where you um, you can get energy in a battery size this is already being tested so when we release the plasma batteries then you have a different option with the whole thing and you can use different gauges for different batteries the the, the structure has opened up now we can develop everything around it but the biggest problem you have is to educate the scientists who sit there, especially as I was explaining and talking to Armin, your, the scientists have to be educated. This is your biggest problem and we have enough expertise now in the foundation to teach them what to look for. Because then they say there is no difference, there is nothing there. Because they are ignorant to the new product, the new testing. You have to be guided, and then when they do the testing, they see it, they understand it. Especially when you go into the governmental research level, they are becoming ready because they have to prove you do not work, it doesn't work, or there is something wrong. But if you tell them to do the test in the right way, the way it should be done, they see the, the, what, it, what they have, and then they see the properties. If you get a system which is not working, it means the system is not quoted properly. We expect three to five percent return on this basis when it's gone through the production. Something has happened, the coating doesn't happen, you get replaced. You always have 12 month guarantee with all the systems which are coming out. Don't forget, we promise you one thing. We inform every government to the addresses of the people which we have supplied the units to. This was the ethos, this is what we agreed we do with you, that we work in collaboration with the government. When we send the um, systems out, after a certain time, we inform the government in what, in which country, how many we supplied, and what has been supplied. And then you do the same. You inform your government what you are using, and this is the power you're using. Let the society work the correct way. It's not that you give you the units and you don't need anything. Remember, try to establish a continuous demand on your circuit, which means don't plug and unplug. Every time you plug and unplug, you create a switch. The plasma has to find its balance. To find its balance, it takes energy from the grid. If you have a heater, let the heater run. If you have a, a lighting system, let your lighting system run. Because from now on, energy is free. Because look at it this way. This is one of the biggest uh, stumbling psychologically we've been given because of the power supply. When you use light in any form, these are all lights we have, we've been told you have to save energy because we were burning something to convert. Now, if you understand the work of the plasma technology and you see the heating or light, all you do, you're converting energy to something else. It's never wasted. This ethos of uh, switch the lights, we have to save energy, as of today, is dead. Because you have to understand, conservation of energy allows you to convert one to another. We convert the plasma into a light, and the light affects something else. It converts to something else which the environment needs. In coming time, you will find out we can let cities let day and night because it's all the same. These systems don't need to be recharged. Energy is continuous. The plasma releases its energy continuously. Hopefully, once we complete the uh, the vibration cycle which we are looking for, then you'll find out 
any energy on it is constant, it's permanent. This, hopefully, I hope I ask if we can confirm it by tomorrow morning, or if not by early next week. We achieved, uh, it's taken a long time. I work with lots of geniuses of uh, time in working with these things. I, I respect him a lot. He's, uh, he's very correct in conduct, a man with ethos. And he's working very hard in the background, testing all these things for us. And in time, with the development of uh, the technology, we share the knowledge freely, the way you see. Very rapid, even they put the power unit box on the table. This is what's going out for seven and a half kilowatt. We will change the industrial revolution in a very good way. Very, very effective way. And you see seen it there, these wall units, distribution units, this is what they have in Philippines. Here, we have to be fancy, we cover it like this, otherwise you lot don't like it. You can use a tree trunk, still does the same. You can use a coconut and put the rings in it. This is what I said to Alex and to uh, Benjamin. I said, don't look into the West for the latest system to look so good. Work the way that the system can do. In Africa, they are not interested in air condition, whatever. We give them air condition system in a very close time. They have more efficient air cooling system than Americans and the Europeans. Do you know why? Because nanomaterials inherently work cool. Is the property. Is part of proteo. Superconductors is to go cold. Creating heat in nanomaterials is difficult. It's not easy. I explained to you in the teachings of the past, when we put copper wires in nano-coated, or if I go black, you will enjoy it more. When we put them on the heat, extreme current, we see the glow here. This copper literally melts. But the, what do you call it? The containment, this is my ring which does this. What well, we have a problem, Houston? This is a software problem. What is the problem? We are not getting it. No, it's um, it's software has cracked up. It's okay, it's coming back and it's going. Okay, it seems it's okay now. So, what we see, we see glow inside the copper melting, but the shield, the, what do you call it, the cascade, the nano layer holds. And you can hold it in your hand. You hold the nano coated, but the copper inside is molten. You see the light through it, you see the shine of molten copper. And then when you let it go, the copper takes the shape back again. I've seen this 10, 20 times. No, you don't feel the temperature. No, it's not. This is one of the problems. But the strange thing is, when you speak to the people, especially now they're building the batteries, they feel the heat in their blood, in their fingers. But 
the nano coating is cool. Because the magnetic field of the nano layer interacting in the blood is a problem. Ah, is the teddy bear the problem? Ah, there we are. It's the sensor. The problem is the teddy bear. It moved in last night. There we are. That's why the board wasn't working. They say it never work with animals and children. <coughs> so, what you have, you can hold other materials. They don't heat up. Don't know. We haven't seen one yet. So, don't forget to be nano coated. No, it cannot do. If you think of it theoretically, it's impossible for the wire to become nano coated totally inside. I tell you why. Always think logical way. If you have, if this is your, sorry about that. If this is your copper, yeah, let's expand it. And um, now, understanding the principle of nanotechnology, which means this is a compact bar. When you nano coat it, if I'm going to do it this way that we are correct. And let's see. I'm going to take over this way because then it means something you understand. This is a, a molecular structure, atomic structure. They're all tightly packed. Yeah? If you look at it, let's say this is a, each one a molecule of copper. Now that we go into nano structure, you see what happens. The spacing, if you look at it now, if you even take those off, this is the same material nano coated. Uh, this is the problem for, I think Caroline has got to live without the ring on my hand for a while. So you have this space. So you want to keep your already nano-coated material into the confinement of, um, what do you call it? The cascading nano-coating. Uh, The volume is not there because if they open up now these have to become like this um, they have to become like this and you see you cannot accommodate because they created a space gap the thing most probably has to become 30, 40 times bigger size to everything to be nanocode. So the forces of the plasma does not allow. It's impossible to do it. You've seen it when you nanocode the material and you make a GANS. It's a very thin layer of nanomaterial. But by the time you get the GANS out of it, there's a huge amount of GANS at the bottom because now the atoms grow up. It's like a popcorn. You put a handful of uh, uh, corn in the pocket. This way you plasmatically release it. It's a popcorn. It doesn't fit into the box. It just flows over. That's all it is. It cannot be done. You cannot nano coat unless you create an environment for everything to release. And 
can't hear the question there. I don't understand. What is it nano coated? What the copper? Bring it to us to see. We never seen one. Um, we never seen. I've tried many ways trying to nano coat these impossibilities. Ah, that's a different thing. We're talking about plasma. If you heat the copper, I've got to see it. If you have it, we can see it. But we tried a lot of different ways to nano coat a full wire is impossible. Unless you allow it to open up like a sponge. You got to bring it for us to see it. Because You got to be seen because it's uh, it's impossibility to open it up. We see copper when it's going the high speed. We see it with the almond when we do a nano coat uh, producing guns, rapid guns with a high current. We get a black uh, what do you call it? Guns is more or less in a gas state of nano state. I don't know what you're talking about. We've got to see it. Is the reason for it? Yes, Alvin. Uh, yeah, it's Alvin. You don't need to have it. Uh, some of the nano coating, uh, you know, after a month of using, we've seen that it's going away. Some people claiming that, uh, you know, after, let's say, a few days, the nano coating goes away. You know, it's uh, because of uh, they didn't do it the proper way. No, no, it doesn't go away. This, we, I can answer you. You can answer them very easy. When you nano coat and your nano coating goes away, it's not nano coated. No, it does not come, that's not a condition. What happens, I explained to you exactly what's going to happen. Tell them to keep, and you can test it. You can put your nano coated material in a sealed container and create, if you're like in a near OC level and in, in a moist environment area where the moisture is high and you've got the salt content in the air, which is normal. Now, instead of this box, you're having a, what do you call it? You're having a sea salt and water in such quantity, the air moisture behaves the same. So your nano layers which you produce, they will become GANs as part of the environment. So if you put a plate in and collect them, you'll find the GANs at the bottom of the plate. The moisture of the environment with the salt in it uh, behaves like, uh, <coughs> like the, what do you call it, salt water. No, always when we did the nano coating, it's uh, all we had the nano coating that six months it produces for us. I have nano coating from 10 years ago. What, we have bottles we but kept. What is, what is the problem that, uh, you know, you saying that after a few days all the nano coating is so First of all, ask them how they keep it, where they keep it. In if it's, water. pardon? In the salt water. In the salt water. So what has happened, if it's gone, ask them to look at the bottom to see if you have the black spots. You, you just rinse it, you see it. The material has become nano material at the bottom. It's so, you got to remember, and I explained this before, you're dealing with nuclear atomic structure and remember one thing, what does nano mean? Nano is 10 to minus nine. That's what nano comes from. One atom, is 10 to the minus 9 centimeter or meter. It's so minute, we can't see it with our own eyes. Now you allow it to expand to a popcorn, you see it as a gans.
Um, I've lost the live stream uh, bandwidth totally and the Zoom as well. Not sure how I can. Hello. How I can. Hello, are we back? Where did we lose you? Uh, well, I have to restart the live stream because it uh, crashed. Your live stream crashed? Yeah. Ah, so you had nothing to do with us here. How many people you have there? 835. 835 right now. Um, Shouldn't be that much. It wasn't our fault. It's the uh, send day they drop. Why? Are we on the support backup? It's come on. That's fantastic. Okay, so we are good. Hello. Yeah, just You're here. Okay, here. so we are. Uh, wins. Yeah, yeah. Twenty gigabyte uh, new unit has kicked in, so we are safe. So we have 40 gigabytes per month to back up. We can keep it there for any drop. Okay. <coughs> I do apologize with my call this week is bad enough. Strange enough, we picked up this call on the 16th uh, ambassador meeting from somebody in the meeting. And it's five or six of us here in this area who were in that meeting, they got it. So, what it is, you collect nanomaterials, as I was explaining, then you have a dust. And why they can't make fiber or something out of it? Because these guys here, they're nano-coated, they kept their distance. They do the same when they're in the nano-dust particle. Making fabric out of nanomaterial is an art. Because you got to remember, nanoparticles keep their distance from each other. There is a way you can make a cloth. I have solved this problem 10 years ago. Yes. Yeah, but you cannot use it as a cloth. We are talking as a fabric. You cannot use it as a fabric. You can put whatever you like into it. There is a method that you can make cloth out of nanomaterial. You have to understand. It's extremely, um, what do you call it? Um, is undestructible. We cannot destroy it. The cash, uh, this cave on, can, can you can you make a skin or you know the skin of an organ out of it? Yes, you can make a skin. You can make a cloth out of it. There is a way to do it, and you can make um, you can make it in a specific way. Uh, it's it's a technique. Because, uh, I, as I always say in all the teaching, as you come to it, I open the door. Till you don't come to it, really, are you still in pain? The same. We have a guinea pig here who's been using the pen. Do you know where the blue pen is? Who's got it? You have it. Don't go too wrong with it. They say, all roads end up in Rome, but not our pen. So, you, you, we understand more and more about the behavior of the material, the, the possibility of the expansion of the knowledge is huge, but now we're all in it. We're all in it because um, everybody now has a chance to produce everything they need, but we have to master the art. The art of plasma, 
out of collection of the plasmas, out of collection of the energies of the plasmas. In the uh, structure of the teachings, we went from matter to nano, we went to, uh, to creating the GANs, and then we went to put the GANs in the rotating coils to what you call release their energy as what we call a free plasma and we've seen the results. Now we have to understand which part we want to harvest at what strength. This is the this is the uh, what you call the holy grail of plasma technology. It's, it will employ more people than any industry ever created on this planet. Everything we have used, we have developed over past thousands of years. Now we know how to do it in an easy way and we'll find a way to adopt it. If you stay on this planet, this is the future. There is something very interesting. I'm going to go back, if I can go back to the, can we go back to the other page, the previous page? Pardon? Here? Here. Here. Where? The shadow area. Yeah, the shadow area. Here. Ah. Oh, yes. How, how did you get there? There is no more. I'm on this page. Okay. Now, fantastic. I need to learn teaching. I will not need to be taught. I'm always a student of life. Very interesting point. This goes into ethics of the power supply. This goes into the ethic of the system. Look at the structure. I'm going to draw it for you in a totally different way. This is your stacker unit. This is the connection to the matter unit. This is the outcome from your system. Interaction with the matter state. Interaction of energy in a plasma with the plasma. Interaction of the plasma with the pure plasma. The physicality, the emotion, and the soul. Now, you understand? When I tell you what you feel, what you have, the systems have a full application of human body. Your physical body is a Gans state, but is in interaction with, this is covered with the Gans, is interaction with a matter state, which is the physicality of this planet. But here it has no con contact with it, but is connected with totally plasmatic condition, which is your emotion. And out of the interaction of two totally non-dimensional, totally energy-based magnetic field, you have the creation of the control, which is the soul. I explained to you, these systems are built this way. When I asked our guys to stack it up at the three, like a pizza stacker, it looked funny. But 
you understand what it means. You'll find the performance, as Renan told you, they add three stackers, three, six, nine, because you put people next to each other. <coughs> understand? That's why I said, you cannot do anything wrong with this technology. It's non-dimensional, and then, if you want, you can use it, as you do, through your connection, through your soul, you connect it to a system, and you make condition of the matter. Where your soul, as it goes backwards, decides to your emotion, to the physicality. The technology has to be understood in its totality. What it does, how it interacts, and how uh, it gives, the reason it gives, what it gives. So, if you are a person <coughs> standing here, you interact with the emotional level that what you expect out of physicality, you should be able to get what you like, because the connection is already established. This is what I said, when you interact with these systems, your wish is your command. You want heat, you receive heat, you want food, you receive food. Because now you see exactly how it works with your level. At this level, is the interaction of physicality, which is this. At this level, is your emotion. And at this level, it works with your soul. Now, take the knowledge a step further. then you might be enlightened through your soul. If you don't understand what I'm going to explain in the next 10 minutes, it means you're still in too much physical dimension. What happens when this connection itself is connected to this. What happened? Literally, if you connect yourself back to yourself. Hmm? Yeah, it's in right plus or minus. I'm sure, look, I did it before I looked. It's green there and it's green there. I thought somebody might be clever, so... What's going to happen to this? What is the condition of it? What about if we connect this to another one of this here, that, or we connect this to another unit plug of this one here. We work totally in the plasma condition. This is what I explained to you, you go into 75 kilowatts, 100 kilowatts, 1000 kilowatts. What do you do? In your system, you put a power unit, at the beginning of the house, and you put a power unit at the end of the house. And whatever you have in the house is in the middle. This is what yesterday I explained, we supply you with the auxiliary unit. 
auxiliary units allows different structure of power. Now, take the knowledge a step further. You put a unit you give to the government and you connect units in the extremities of a city. Now, you see what you can do with the whole city. Brennan put the stackers on top of the stackers, trying to go to Savannah. The test shows this is a very conventional unit to do. So, we need one unit in the center, in a powerful position, and four in the extremities, and whatever in over three, six months people use, gradually the whole city, the whole wiring becomes a supply for itself, the city becomes self-sufficient. This test has proven to be correct, and that's what I said yesterday to you, you can buy auxiliary unit, which is the second unit, you connect to the extreme point of the house, your wiring to the house is in the basement, you connect one unit to the top floor, where is the end of the line, allow it three or four weeks, and you can put six, eight kilowatts in between. Because now you cascade it. This is what I was discussing with our people. This is a cascading of the sister hall house, extended to the city. Megawatts, gigawatts can be produced because all the wiring, even underground in the city, which bring electricity to you, are getting nano coated, and they are the best supply because they get all the energy from gravitational field of the earth. You don't need to <coughs> gas coat them because they absorb, like the root of the plants, the energy from the ground. So, what do you see? This is a way, when so many people use the system in the area, you all become energy self-sufficient. Yes? Doesn't matter, we've got nothing to do with British Kingdom is finished, now everybody is equal. So, what it is, you have to understand what is coming. You can give one unit to your neighbors, 10 door down the line, one unit to the beginning of the road, and one to the line the other side, and with 10 units, in three or four months time, all of you get free energy. You don't get the free energy, you get the energy of the plasma, because the nano coating stays constant, now all the lines become absorbent of the energy because the nano-coating will bring you everything. Listen to what our Mexican friends in the last teaching they said, and I repeated it before, I repeat it again, that they've taken the unit out of the house and they've taken it to the sisters or brother's house and the house originally was placed in two or three months, they're still using the energy without the meter running. Do you remember that? Going to the Spanish teaching last week. This is what has happened. It's not that the unit is working somewhere else, they're receiving free. They have nano-coated all the wires in the house, so now the house is a power supply. And then, take the knowledge a step further. If, what we've seen with the tests with our dearest friend Alex, where he put the gans of the orange juice and the gans of the banana and the gans of the grass that he made him, uh, what do you call it, uh, drunk, into a system, and you place it in the cities. And you'll find out, whatever the man needs, at a given position, you place it. You provide that food in the same order 
across the city. This should be within the next few months, if collectively as a human race we work to bring this into cooperation, there should be no one going hungry. If we can get one million units in Italy, Italy is a shoe. So, if we can work very closely with all the Italians, we are here, we are committed to this country. Let us do it together. If we do it this way, that this is the boot of Italy, we forget about your kicking ball, what we call Sicily, and this is your country, like this way, it's our home now. If we put enough units across Italy, we manage to cover with the one million within the next few months, and you understand this proposition, you can imagine what happens in Italy. You don't need to pay a cent for energy to import. Because enough unit will support. We can place conditions the same way across continents and nations. This is not a dream now. The technology is in our hand. The technology is on the move across borders. The technology is in different nations. Now it's for the humanity to start the process. You want water, you have to find out how to do it. You do not need to look for food. No Italian child, knowing this, should go hungry to bed. Because he or she will never feel hunger, because he will receive the energy as he walks on the streets. I wonder if we see dogs or cats or birds eating each other in Italy. Yes. What about the down transformers, one million dollars? That's the government's problem, not ours. That's a matter of state. They have to sort it out. Pardon? Where is your microphone? Sorry about that. Okay. Instead of produce millions of units, isn't it more clever use the units for three, four months in one house and then move the units away? We the have to understand what happens to the next step. We have to understand. It's a development, it's evolution of the technology. The position is, it's a plasma. The position is, it's a, in a magnetic gravitational field. The position is that it's at the level, because it's made from the materials which our body is made. We only accept what we need from it. Are we going to have new cycle of our generation of people, which, like in Italy, we don't see people driving behind you and they go, they all go. Have you seen it? Yesterday down the road, I was going home. Italians, they come about five centimeters, and I strode next to the other car. Goes, going, and I said, in a few weeks' time, the guy will go, no problem, I get home, I get home. All night, it will be all. <laughs> it will happen because he receives what he needs. There is no rush to get somewhere. But this is one thing I don't understand. What are we rushing for? Yeah. What happened? Are we losing or are we getting disrupted? It's okay, let us know when you're ready. What? You want music? Thank you.
Hello, Vince. Hello. What's the problem? Is it with the online stream or is it with them? What do you mean, problem with the account? Have they closed it down again? Okay. Thank you. 
Thank you. 
What was the problem? I think we got the live stream issue sorted out. It must have been just a little glitch with the live stream itself, with the servers themselves. So um, um, uh, Rick is coming back in right away. I think he's just on on the Zoom here, and then we will we can continue if you're ready. Is the live stream still on? I think so. Just, just getting it set up. Okay, that's perfect. Sorry about the wait, everybody. Okay, Excuse me. Start the Let me go back to start. Going back to start. Okay. Ready to go. Yeah. Is this from the screen there or do they switch us off? Give me another second here. We should be just about ready, Mr. Cash. <sighs> Okay, just get the, let me get the sound set up here. Okay, there we go. Okay, for people on live stream, this is part two of the uh, 85th Knowledge Seekers Workshop. We had uh, some kind of glitch in the live stream there. Okay, I think we're ready to get back into it here. Thank you, Mr. Kesh. Um, You're welcome. Thank ahead. you very much. Um, what we were explaining was that if we manage to get enough systems across Italy, then we can support the whole of Italian community in energy and power, in a coming time in food, in medicine, where we can change the condition very rapidly. What is interesting, one of the smallest nations on this planet is right in the center of Italy and it's known as Vatican. It's a government, it's a country. And it's right in the center, sitting in the center of Rome. I was talking to one of these guys a couple of weeks ago, and Vatican has no power generator capability. They rely on the supply from Italian government. What about if we give a few units power generators want to sit in the center of Vatican and then they spread around the Vatican and let's see if we can enlighten the whole Vatican in Mongo very freely. They say the proof of pudding is in eating it. It's a small country, it's got its own uh, capacity measurements as a city, as a country. It's got its own ambassadors. So maybe when we meet with them next week, we can offer Vatican independent power supply. We plant one somewhere in the city, in the center, and we plant 10 or 15 units around the Vatican city on the borders of the castle. And then we let, if the gods want to speak, they speak through Vatican. Yes, it works, so we can give it to the rest of the nations on this planet. It's a small size capacity. That can be done. Yeah? On Monday, we're meeting with the officials from Vatican in Rome, and then we can offer them. I'm not here on Monday, I'm in Rome, and the people who know uh, can arrange it, we can show it, and then we can test the rest of it. <clears throat> You've got to understand something, the whole purpose of this technology is one race, one planet, one nation. We are blind to color, race, religion, and the rest. One of the most important parts will be India. Somebody is laughing. The tourists come and go. But the Holy Fathers are inside the buildings that are there, they live. So we can see the behavior of the world in the coming time in the priests. Would any of them will lie anymore? Or would they all speak the truth? 
would they all tell us what they say is correct and we believe them? Because now from now on nobody can lie. Then the very big question is how will change the humanity? I think Vatican will refuse. Or they might accept for the energy, but they don't know what might come afterwards with it. As you know, most of a lot of people in this city are very old, they are priests. They have served their churches for years in different countries, and their wisdom has come to the center to be used by the others. A lot of them has a lot of illnesses. Can we see the change of course of illnesses in these old people? Very interesting step. And it's just down the road from us. We can send Giovanni every day collecting data. I wonder how many people will sign sick today. What about if the owners of buildings, offices, put these units across their building for their power supply? and they see the change of conduct in their workers. There'll be no scarring, no don't just sit there pretending to work, you work. There'll be no absentees because nobody will be sick to be absent. Would the production go up? Would the performance change? Or would it become the honest time to work? As I was explaining this years ago, we had a system in British nuclear fuel when I used to work. Is you were free to work 37 hours or 35 hours a week. And it was fantastic how the system was working 40 years ago. It was perfect model. If you could repeat it, and people were the way it was happening then, you find efficiency at the maximum. We had seven days working week. We had to fulfill minimum four days. I mean, you had to be in office for four days. You could work three 12 hour shifts, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, attend one hour on Thursday, and Thursday, 10 o'clock, you could leave and come back on Monday. But as long as the jobs was done. People used to organize themselves to be in time that together we had groups of guys who used to turn up certain hours together. They could match their time for playing golf the rest of the week. It used to be known as the golfer clubs. So they fulfilled and they were connected to each other. The work was related to each other. So they decided they play golf. So these are the times we're coming, 37 hours. The golf group used to turn up at the same time for work. So they knew the golfers are not here today. Because it was to serve the British nation in the nuclear industry to see it through. And it was, that was all the objective. The pay was good. Nobody had to uh, be on a low level, high, although all the payments even those days was very high. So there was no scraping, it was a satisfaction. And what did we achieve? What British government achieved in British nuclear a few years ago? It was a fantastic system. It works because people are happy. They come to work when they want to, and when they are there, they perform. They don't die and dock. With these systems, you have everything you have. Would we see that change? Or would we see the absenteeism become so rare that the companies find out they have too many workers because everybody is working correctly? It is it's going to change a lot of things. I've seen things, I see people what they report from different applications of the system. Not worries. This is part of the work which we do in the foundation. Take people's worries away then they perform at their best.
Maybe with this technology, we can do that. If we cover Italy, maybe we cover Rome, or we cover Vatican, the smallest nation on this planet, more or less. You can go around the whole country, I think in less than 15 minutes, you can cover the whole Vatican City. Can we put beacons, like units across the Vatican? Or shall we donate the first hundred units to Vatican? The process is very simple. The process is being able to transfer gravitational magnetic field. Can we size it to one? I'll put my ring on again. Can we size it to one? Or can we allow it to expand? Can we test this in Italy? It's a half island country connected to the part of Europe. Maybe that's why we are here, to start a change from this point. There is a huge problem. There's going to be a huge problem is how we are going to transfer energy from here. As you know, Keshe Foundation is very, very strong in Italy. We have a huge supporters group. And a lot of them are practical people. They just don't look after their hair. They make things. You've seen him. What's his name? is always on the truck, but still calls in and explains. Pardon? Mr. Stefano. What about all the Italians who start building your units and putting it through? Next month, or sorry, next week, we release a thousand units in Italy. Can we ask the Cash Foundation supporters, if you don't have energy unit, if you are in need, but you're not rich that you can have a warm winter, write to Cash Foundation Italy and maybe we send you a unit free. We start from home. Cash Foundation Website man is sitting here joining. Can you set such a thing up? Yeah? People genuinely need a unit this winter. People with family, old people. I want a unit for my mother who's poor or cannot afford heating this winter. Send us the dress. Giovanni filters it. The way we invited people to, what do you call it, to the 16th uh, ambassador meeting. We take a thousand Italians through the Cash Foundation supporters and we give you a unit free. If you receive it and you think is what it is and you like to donate something to the foundation that another Italian can be benefited by it, do so. You can handle. Yeah? So put a website, a link to your website, Magra Power Unit for donation. And if you are Italian listeners, write to the, go to the Cash Foundation website, maybe tomorrow, whatever, whenever Giovanni can do it. And we collect a thousand addresses and we give a thousand units free to the people who need it. If you are rich, if you have the capability and the means of paying for a unit, do so. But if you know an Italian family with children who's going to have a cold winter, especially in the north of Italy, because we live there, we know how cold it can get. Right to the foundation, we send you a unit free. Even if that can reduce your electricity bill by 50 or 100 euro, 200 euro this winter till the system builds up in your house, it's still 200 euro food for the children. <coughs> A thousand units we allocated to Nigeria. A thousand units we have given to Palestine. We do a thousand units through the Cash Foundation, Italy. That's why it's set up there. We can do that. Yeah. So if you're Italian and you know, let's say the families 
with children, because these are the target points. The elderly, which have no money, they just live on a very small amount of income from the government. Not only giving it to them, we have to set up a backup that we can install it for them. We can show them how to use it. We have Cash Foundation leaders in each district in Italy. It's been organized. Am I correct? We got to make them responsible. This is the unit going to this address. It's your responsibility to make sure they know how to use it. Let's do the job. In Nigeria, Alex, once they receive it, will teach the people how to connect and how to use it. But there is something very interesting is going to happen. This is something which we think, and we are 100% correct, hopefully, to say so. When you connect your unit to your main line, and you use it in the house, what we have seen is a very strange phenomenon. All the Cash Foundation supporters around the world are aware of this. We've been demonstrating it for a long time. For every kilowatt of energy you consume, you put into the grid four kilowatt plasma energy. In the test here, we did two weeks ago, in a specific condition, we have achieved eight times. If we put a thousand units across Italy, and they use two kilowatt resistive plus non-resistive on top, let's say three kilowatt a day, we'll be booked back 3,000 kilowatt hour into Italian national grid. So, as we said, we'll share the knowledge and the benefit of the knowledge with Italians, the way they supported us, we support the nation. And we put a thousand unit across Italy from Monday starting off. We pay for it. When you receive it and you're happy with it, you can donate to the foundation, into the bank of the foundation, and it allows us to produce more units for more Italians for the rest of the people around the world. We have a very small team of about 20, 25 people who are on the payroll of the Cash Foundation worldwide. And once we satisfy the expenses, which is very little compared to what is happening, the rest goes into the backup in supporting the nations and people who come. So let's test Italy as a first point. Go to the Cash Foundation Italy.it. If you are an Italian passport holder, Italian address holder. And if you know someone, you can nominate. Could be your grandmother, could be your next door neighbor. And Giovanni is going to have a hectic time going through a thousand, maybe ten thousand application. We don't going to judge you if it's a lie or it's a true. Yes, the address is Cash Foundation Italy dot IT. Yes, it's a website. On the website, it is active. Everybody will go on it. It is. He's going to put a special email to the website. This is a website, Cash Foundation. Italy.it has been there a long time. So on that website, Giovanni today or tomorrow is going to open a link where you can send emails or an application form. It's just to clarify, it's not Cash Foundation Italy, it's Cash Foundation Italia.
dot it. Italia. Ah, okay. These Italians, they do the things that way. We call it Rome, they call it Roma. Okay. Italia. Cash Foundation, Italia dot it. Let the group in the background do their work and set up a page where you can go in, fill in a form. We take on the sequences of first come, first serve. If you don't need it, you'll be dishonest people who will do it. And I'll tell you what's going to happen. If you're dishonest when you see the system, you'll find out it will not work the way you want it. This is a very correct system. You will very understand very soon. Don't say, I got sick, I used the system, something was wrong with it, because you stole it from an old woman who could not heat herself and ended up with pneumonia in the hospital. You're paying for her pain. Understand this technology very clearly. So, you know someone who needs it, who knows somebody needs a gift of life this winter to feed their children, put priority for the families with the children, and Giovanni will give us a list. He will forward it to the factory, and the factory is blind to who's paid, who's not paid, because it's handled totally different way. We made sure of that. So they will never know somebody has paid, how much they paid, if it's a free unit, or whatever. We feed the same way as we are feeding to the supply of the people who paid, or if you are rich enough, you can pay for 100 units, I want to donate 100 units across, that 100 unit you pay for, we pack it by another three, that's 300 units plus one, 400 units will go to public. So, you got to realize, fill in the form, and then we respond. Very strange things are moving here. <coughs> Yes, no problem. You can record it. It's, uh, we know they are jamming it. We understand how it's happening. We, we were expecting it. It's Thursday morning. Every Thursday they play with us. And we know who's playing. We have to find out how certain nation in Western part of Europe is playing their game. So, in so many ways, the first thousand units, which is coming off production line in next two, three weeks, Africa to uh, what do you call uh, Italy and to Palestine. As we receive orders, we are distributing the same process up. And let's see, we can change the course through the Cash Foundation organizations. Maybe the week after or next month, we announce, we ask for 10, 20 cash foundations around the world to nominate people in their country. Don't give it to your cousins or to your uncles. Give it to the nationals. And try to choose your nationals as spread across Italy, as spread across your nation, that we can achieve this goal, that we spread enough across the nation that we start seeing the benefit of it. I think when you choose the destination, choose it across Italy. Yeah? You understand? That we don't put it all in in Rome or in the north. You understand? Create a net. And then when we put the next thousand units in Italy, we create the next net. You understand? So we we control the distribution. A lot of Italians have bought units. You receive your needs coming, come, coming days. The factory will start the work of the distribution. You got to understand, we have started employing large number of people in the factory. We are creating jobs. We become now part of the structure of workforce of Italy. And my instruction has been to the factory directors who are running it for uh, the workforce, they have to be paid according 
two plus market, which Mr. means Kesha, yes. Just a question regarding that as well. Um, people are asking online if there is a a way to buy just the casings of the units. Casings? Why do you want the casings? You want to cheat to say you bought it? <laughs> Oh, use your use your pizza stacker. Why you want to cheat? What do you want my box for? Very soon they just want the logo. No problem. Logo is free. We haven't copyrighted the logo. We put a C on it to keep it for the copyright. It means belongs to the world population. This copyright C we put on the Cash Foundation logo, which you see, means doesn't belong to the Spaceship Institute. It belongs to humanity. Means this time nobody can come and say, I decided the logo to be mine because it has a color red. That color red has cost 363,000 euro this month. So, that logo, you can copy, but understand it has an ethos. That copyright logo, which is done by Renan, is belongs to humanity, belongs to the worldwide. Means nobody can ever take it off. It belongs to the Keshe Foundation, and the Keshe Foundation is owned by every living things who can think and have a soul on this planet. Even the fishes can claim it. If you can find a mermaid who speaks. So, if you see your conduct is correct, you made a system that your work and the use of it is the correct way, it's your logo, it doesn't belong to the foundation. This is how it works. People, if they think, I'm going to copy the logo of the Cash Foundation and I'll put it on my company products, whatever I produce. You will come and tell us, I use this system, there is something wrong with it. Because it's made with the wrong intention. When you receive the unit, when you dedicate or allocate a unit to somebody, when they receive it, tell them to pray for it, that it serves them right. So, as I said, we have sold one unit, or we received three units, three, we distribute the first, as it comes, as the availability. If we sell the first million at a price which is going at the moment, you have to understand, three million people around the world who receive free units. We'll do it, we'll try to be as transparent, but we have set the structure to be done through the Cash Foundations. Cash Foundations around the world will take over distribution because all the people who are around the Cash Foundation around the world are of the same means. I've received a very interesting communication last night that they are going to release something about my private life, how I fell in love with a woman, and they call it Mrs. X. This story is already known throughout the world, and now they see the Cash Foundation breaking through, they want to score a point for themselves. These are the enemies of the Foundation who have been sitting around to do the damage. So, in so many ways, the technology sits on its merit of its serving the humanity not on what people try to do. Every time we launch, we had the success after success. On the point, they brought the server down. On the point, they took the logo off and everything else. And now with this, it's the biggest hit they think gonna go the maximum to. The humanity works on what the technology delivers and the humanity goes on how we can serve and give love to each other and caring for each other. So, you got to realize something very simple. We spend this week, we taught you everything. Tomorrow is your turn. Tomorrow, whole day. If you have something, you manage to finish a system, we give you the opportunity to show it. 
Just stack your system on. Put the system, you made the rings, you made the coils, put them on. And even if it goes to a spark, blank, whatever, we know you have water in it. If your wires heat up, it means you have chosen under gauge wire. All you need is to change. These systems, I'm going to show it to you. And that's what we said from the beginning. Pardon? They are absolutely damage proof. You cannot do it. Unless you click it, you can do whatever you like with it. You want to shake it? Oh, you can do whatever you like with it. You cannot damage it. Probably the box. So, you, huh? No, the glue doesn't work. Remember. <laughs> Sorry, but that's the American glue. This is what you brought. Don't blame the Italians for it. It's a, it's a composite glue you brought from America. Get your glue sorted. So, what, we cannot take it out because it's connected to the wire there in the fuse box. You, you see, you better watch with the Italians. We're becoming a better supporter. We live here. We have to look after them. So, what I said, you can do whatever you like with these systems. Remember the first time when I showed it, I kicked it, and they made a video of it, the Italians? What's his name? Emmanuel Nushka made a kick out of it in the video. Now, you see exactly what we told you. You can't do any damage to the systems. Even the plastic breaks, the wiring, you see you built it yourself. You cannot damage it. This is the beauty of the technology. It's solid, it's built and made according to the work of the universe. If you can crack a galaxy, if you can crack a universe, you can crack the work of the system. It breaks up, mend it. These systems will last for centuries. If this planet lasts that long. <laughs> You see, you get me doing things. Now we can't get the American glue back on. You can't blame the Italians. Don't say Italian work. This is the glue you brought from the United States. So you still see, it says, a bit of scratch on the paint, but it says Magra Power. You built it, you're building it tomorrow and whole of next week. As we come online, you show your systems, we show it around the world. You learn something, teach us. Pardon? Yes. Yes, Carly is. Uh, Carly is a Chinese Cash Foundation. He's the Chinese guy you heard his voice talking when it was released on the internet. He's a very active member in Chinese Xinjiang area of the research center they've opened up. He sends us continuously new knowledge, new ways, new. You saw him last week when we were talking with China. He was showing that. Yeah? Late for it, it's only six o'clock ahead of us. Ah, okay, no problem. Maybe we use him tomorrow. Or maybe come on back. Yes, can we show? Do you want us to share a screen? Yeah, just give me one second. I'm gonna uh Let's Who's see. this one? This is Kal El, Mr. Cash from America. Okay. Um, let me see because uh, I, uh, it, they're they're actually. Um, let me see. 
Let, can, just give me a few seconds. Give me a few seconds, Vince, to find them. Has the live stream come back on? Uh, no, somehow I'm not able to uh, broadcast from my location to the live stream right now. To Can somebody else do? Uh, it's... Have they blocked your IP? Somebody remotely has blocked your IP into... Something like that. Um, yeah, they did ask with this building. It's done by the Belgium Securities. In this building, we could not get Cash Foundation ourselves in the building while we were here. Yeah. And then we found out they set something inside the building internet. They infiltrated the building. We had it in the first couple of weeks we were here. So they blocked the IP in certain lines. We are Cash Foundation head office here, and we could not get Cash Foundation on the internet in the building. The time of these sabotages is over. Can you get on? Have you managed to get on the system? Yourself there, Kyle, right? They weren't any copyrighted videos. They were yours yourself, correct? Yeah, we actually set up an entire um, uh, setup for you so that we could just go over all of the ganses that we had in the uh, reactors. Uh, but um, it's a different time zone in America because they're in uh, Texas. We've been working on it about uh, uh, maybe as, as many as 500 people that are working in different various uh, stages of it. But uh, we set up a, an entire uh, uh, lab, so to speak, with everything in it. Uh, but there's a time difference, so I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if the guys have fell, fallen asleep over there. Uh, excuse me, can you repeat how many of you are there? Um, I'm actually doing it uh, through a radio show, and I'm doing it all over the country. So it's sometimes as many as 500 people at one time that are in various stages of nanocoding it uh, all the way throughout the, all, all the teachings. Ah, okay. And you have a center in the state doing this? Right now, Mr. Cash, I'm just doing it all on my own. I just think that the information is uh, so powerful that I didn't want to wait, so I just started to, uh, to teach. Get in touch with Armand uh, on uh, Cash Foundation USA. And if you need support from us there, uh, we can back you up. The American uh, Cash Foundation, as you know, has moved with the hit stress of AI even by 50,000 points in the past week or so, two weeks or so. The statistics we monitor. So, it's a huge number of people in the US who support Cash Foundation or are around the foundation looking and options. And uh, uh, Armand is traveling back to U.S. this weekend and some units will be delivered to the State Department for evaluation of American government for the technology. It's already made, arrangement has been made. He will deliver two or three units to the State Department for energy, for evaluation and examination of the units for use in U.S. Oh, this will fly on it. Is it better? Okay, can we get this video or we cannot get there falling asleep? Yeah, I think they might have fallen asleep, Mr. Cash. I'm actually traveling, so I'm in Europe right now. Uh, and and uh, there's a big time difference from over there to right now. Okay, is there anybody else? I think a lot of you got knocked off by realizing that 
you have to make your capacitor unit. You were not prepared for this. And now you have to make the capacitor units, and I'll quote them. I think Monday, Tuesday will be a good time to see the first results coming in. By the time you make capacitors, you place them in, you get them working on Tuesday teaching. We open a Tuesday again as an open day teaching to see if anybody wants to come on to show. But by that time, hopefully, around the world, people who have received their units will report back to us what they received and we show them how they have to do it. Because all the purchase units should be around the world by that time. Any questions? Uh, what's the time? Is it one o'clock, twelve o'clock? Past past? Twelve. Okay, thanks. Okay. Now let's go to a teaching point. Now you have the whole thing. Don't forget. Now you know exactly what you have and you know exactly what you're going to do. Okay. There are a few points. What happened? I can't go back. I lost my pages. Once again. Okay, we are back here. Remember everything which we have explained. When you make your capacitors, make sure the capacitors are insulated from each other physically. <coughs> when you make your capacitors, forget one thing. Even the line of connections you connect at the end, twist them in. In here, when you connect these lines, twist them around the line and twist it back in. You have to keep to the same work all the time. If you make a capacitor set of uh, parallel unit and you leave this and open, that's your loss. These are the things I was teaching to the guys in the factory. Because to them, it was just bundling things together that was good enough. They came to understand every little thing counts. When you're stacking your capacitors, try in your housing to keep them in a position that they do not interfere with each other magnetically. When you connect your, all the wires from one stacker to another, follow the same procedure. Always the same left hand turn. Always turn your wires left hand turn when you're connecting to each other. Just don't go is there. Has to be, everything has to be left hand turn your coils, otherwise you find out zero performance. If you get one coil in the setup, clockwise, anti-clockwise, you'll find problem in your setting. Understand, if you get a big bang, you have possibly moisture, and if you tried everything and the system doesn't work, 99% your failure is at the point of your wire, going to the supply, it has melted. It has disconnected from nano-coating. If you get a disconnection with your unit and you leave it for a while and it comes back, you have the same process. It means you had or you have a weakness in your coating. Golden rule and please understand. It takes us one second if you say your system doesn't work to see if 
you exceeded thousand watt power system. Do not overload. Try to underload at least for the first few days, for the first few weeks. One of the ways we see is instead of connecting the system directly into your power supply and load it up, if you connect it to your power supply, try to understand what you're loading on. If you pass the 2000 kilowatt resistor, otherwise just go across the system and look what you have not done or what you need to do. If you use a cascading system, you put a power unit at the beginning of the house and a power unit at the end of the house, you have to wait that the two sides meet. That you have nano-coated the whole structure. Nano-coating takes time. You've seen it. You put your wires in a caustic and you wait 24 hours to nano-coat a small plate. Now, you have to understand with the plasmatic, you have to nano-coat both ends. In our experience, in our test, we have loaded 5.4 or 5.3 kilowatt energy at this end and we have seen no problem. We have connected in one test up to 4 kilowatt here and we have seen no problem. Don't forget, I work with different groups in different parts of the world and try to understand out of box teaching and research. So, in so many ways, you understand the positioning. Let me explain to you something very interesting. Keshe Foundation Spaceship Institute is looking for scientists to join us on a full time basis for developing of new technologies. We have a pay charter standard, you'll be paid according, but these scientists to develop the space technology in health, in energy, in food, will work from here at this center. It means you have to relocate yourself. All the research will be done here, so we are looking to take up, initially in 2016, up to 1,000 plasma scientists. Plasma scientist to us is not if you have a PhD in anything. Your PhD is in understanding the work of the plasma. You've seen one of our top scientists in plasma, which is serving the foundation perfectly, is Alex, a barber in London, which now has been accepted to teach a nation. You've seen Armand, with no PhD in nanotechnology, is the ambassador of the Keshe Foundation around the world, and he teaches. So, we are looking for our scientists. The scientists who understand the work of the plasma, the work of nanomaterial in plasma, and very soon the way we are teaching of the free plasma, without containment. Understanding, trusting in the work of the universe. So, if you're a scientist, in the new plasma, we are looking, we have the accommodation up to 200 people in this building we can accommodate over 2016 and we can build on or add within the environment here. So we are looking for scientists, developers, not time wasters. You can show us what is the possibility, you can put it on the table, not talking, we are prepared to finance new research, and with it, the research will be going on. On Monday, Tuesday, we have an Italian lady who's joining us here on a part-time basis. She's bringing the application of the medical application with a CO2 and a GANS, with a, what we call the Russian technology development, part Italian development, into the work of the Keshe Foundation. If you have any kind of illness, and you are, or you want to be, what do you call it, processed through this technology, we're going to allocate 
she has her own room in this building, in this structure, that you can come, we want to understand the disease of humanity, and she will release the data, she works the same as us. If you are a scientist, and you have found different ways of feeding, or producing systems that it can cause, or release energy in different forms for medicine, for health, or for uh, agriculture, we give you the room. No time wasting. People who talk sweet, we found out they haven't delivered anything up to now. So, you are given a chance to deliver. If you want to do it, you've seen it the way we did it yesterday. JF in Canada has come up with a situation where he can produce the coils, he can produce the nano coating. The foundation from this week puts his systems up for sale on the foundation. So, not only we give him a job, he creates jobs in Canada, so we see the spin off. So, we work as one family, and as of early next year, we are looking for 1,000. We have the financial capability to support 1,000 delivering research scientists in agriculture, in health, in space, and whatever you develop. You go on the fifth floor in the first, second week of January, you sit down with our scientists or engineers in the factory, you put it out, 3D system will make it. If it works, you carry on developing it, you carry on producing it in the factory, the same process. Because now the Cash Foundation has become a vertical structure, which means from the point of teaching to the thoughts to R&D, to manufacturing, to marketing, to delivering all stays in one house. I have run vertical systems for 20 years around the world, and this is how I plan this place to be. I have always worked vertical, because this way everybody works, the wastage of human resources is very little, because everybody knows everybody, and they know each other's function. So, from next few weeks, this becomes the Spaceship Institute Research Center, and we are looking for scientists who work on donation. We do not employ no one on the books of the Cash Foundation. This is the way the Foundation works. We agree you fall within the category of the payments of the Foundation. We donate funds to you every month, the same amount, to everybody the same. Nobody will ask nobody, how much you're getting paid? Are you getting paid more than me? Do I need to do overtime? Doesn't work that way here. You donate your time, and we donate the resource of the Foundation to you, for you and your family to live a comfortable life. So, if you have developed, you want to develop, you want to manufacture something, come to the Foundation for a month, for two months, for three months, for ten years, whatever you see. And we make Barletta the center of the spaceship program, and as I said, Italians gave us home, we gave them a technology. We increase the power of the Foundation across the nation. When you finish here, you go back, you monitor the development, you monitor the commercialization, and if there is a benefit through the commercialization, you'll be allocated 3% of the standard rate of the shareholder of the invention. Then it allows the other one to come in through and allows us to develop. I've set up a structure that now from today on, from this week on, Cash Foundation works as one family across the world. Doesn't matter where you are, who you are. You develop the system for watering the plants through the GANS or through energy to plasma. You can come here, we give you time, you can show it. You can go upstairs on the fifth floor, commercialize it, sit with our engineering department, which is moving in from Rome to here, and they make the prototype, you test it, works, goes back to the factory, you can monitor the production worldwide, and take charge 
to go to different factories of the Keshe Nations group and teach them, work with them, and do the same. So, now, from today, we announce we are looking for a thousand scientists. Don't waste time. You have a technology. We've seen it from, what do you call it, Mexico. Agriculture development, we support them. In the coming weeks, we support the gentleman in Mexico who's done so much, the Chinese the same. We do the same with the spaceship program. We will announce in the coming weeks a new flight pattern, flight system to coincide with the 21st of meeting, 21st of January or 21st of April meeting in Tehran. That a flight system can be shown. So you got to realize the foundation belongs to you, not to us. As I said, the K. Foundation, SSI, Spaceship Institute, the logo is yours. You've got to be proud to carry it because it's you who can bring it down and nobody else. You have developed the technology for pads. You have produced the technology for pens. You've got the technology for agriculture, for food. We give you room. The room is in this building. You don't need to go anywhere else. And if we are short of a space, we have 60,000 square meter to put porta cabins outside. Don't worry, don't laugh. I worked as one of the top scientists, the head of British nuclear fuel in England. Where we worked, we all worked at a porta cabin. It wasn't posh buildings. We worked in a farm, in a cow shed. And because it was expanded so much, the director of the site, one of the top nuclear physicists in the world, we all worked out of port cabin. The building doesn't count, the knowledge you bring counts. I remember when I used to walk in the corridors of the port cabins, they put British nuclear industry, top scientists working in this cow shed, expanded. The port cabins were put facing each other. And in the middle, they put like pallets. So I used to walk like this, they could hear me coming. You could hear the noise in each portrait cabin. And the top man, top nuclear physicist in England, head of the British Nuclear Field Division, was working at the portrait cabin. The place is, is irrelevant. What you bring in always counts. The expansion is, we can accommodate certain numbers, you bring new knowledge. The target is to develop a full technology that we can go into space, knowing at least we covered most of the points. Possibly, we're gonna make mistakes. But our target is latest 21st of April, 2016, trying to show the first lift system internationally in Tehran. So, you developed, you think your technology can be used very small way. You've seen how a little wire with a couple of turning of wires on it now has become a pen product for your paint. And the man who's put it so openly is part of a group. We work in the background for different things, the technology, knowledge transfer, gravitational magnetic field. He added it up, he came up with what it was, bringing the energy unit into health unit. You got to start co collecting data. We are looking for people who can support for collecting data and information. Transcription of all the teachings, categorizing, all the teachings. It's a huge demand. A lot of information is taught without uh, being transcribed. We are looking for a huge number of support to allow the technology to do. I can take finances from giving free units to people around the world 
to pay wages for people to transcribe. If you're coming here and taking knowledge freely, put something back, transcribe the teachings or whatever, and put it back into the system. So, if you have in your mind and you have tested something and you think it will be good to commercialize it, for the others to benefit by it, your commercialization is by adding it to the blueprint bank. The blueprint teaching which is we had this week is part of the blueprint bank which we announced. You come in, you put it in, you can add videos of what you did, or you want to commercialize it, you can contact us, we can bring you in, test it, develop it, and take charge over its commercialization that other people can benefit by it around the world. Any questions? You got to remember one thing. We are not looking into the banks, we are not borrowing money, we are investing what you trusted back in us with you, with the rest of humanity. There are people who are buying units to see one or two what it is, that they can buy more as agents or whatever, you're quite welcome. It has to be tested. It has to be developed. We have people who want to be part of a technology, but in the way they like to be. You're quite welcome. We are not looking for PhDs, we are not looking at no man's certificate. Because in a space there are no universities and there are no PhDs. Uh, <clears throat> Mr. Kesh, there's a couple of people with um, comments and questions regarding, um, for example, uh, as uh, Glenn asks, as a student in my house, it's okay to nanocoat but if I want to stop the extension of the nano coat, can I use a different metal before my fuse box? And some people are interested, they're in, a, in an apartment, and is the nano coating of their wiring um, going to spread to the, the neighbor? Yes, it does. Will that be it a does. problem? Um, for it does. A, a Your problem? system nano coats the whole building. Will that be a problem for the nope. ordinary electricity? No. Nope. They'll start getting free energy. I don't think they'll object. The only thing they'll see is their bill going down, but they don't know why. You can go and knock on the door in three months and says, has your electricity bill changed? If not, yes, they have. He says, how much are you saving? Can I have 10% of it? I've done it for you free. So in, in effect, the entire building becomes like a, a receiver and transmitter of energy. Uh, yes, because uh, the unit can do, yes. You nano coat it, so they're actually taking from your unit. They're coming through the back door. As I said, go back to the teachings of a few weeks ago. The problem will sit with nuclear power stations. Because you'll be nanocoating all the way right into the center of the uh, fuel rods. Bless you. It means it's going to happen. We just got to wait for it. You started the process. We are here to support. And our goal is, as you know, we do not use GANs and nano materials in any of our teachings. We've gone a step further. This week, we've gone backwards to show the use of GANs and nano material. In the teaching of the Keshe Foundation, now in the Institute, we do not consider any matter state. What you see here on the table belongs to downstairs, is in the museum of the laboratory. Nobody's been there, I think, working properly for a while. Correct? Marco was shocked. There is nothing to do. Now I have to use my own way. And Armand is totally lost. There is no more nano coating to do. Pardon? <laughs> because you have to realize 
what we are teaching you now, the power unit, is already ancient compared to what we're teaching now with respect to plasma. It's in a matter of state. But this is what was a way to break through the knowledge across this planet in the easiest way. You were so hungry for the power that we gave you the whole lot of it. It depends now how you can handle the power. It's a power of knowledge and science in the hand of common man. And usually you've seen common man because he doesn't carry a certificate of knowledge. He looks at everything in a natural way and they find new solutions, new dimensions. So, if you have or if you think you can add to the knowledge and you can bring in to make life comfortable for other people, we give you time, space, and the finances. We are looking for people who have or tested the technology for animals. Because we need animal psychologists or vets which can develop this technology for doing the same thing through animals, they understand their behavior, what changes, how we can help the animals. We are looking for people who work in the pesticide section of the agriculture. If you can put CO2 or a GANS combination where you don't harm another animal to kill a pesticide, to create a new environment that they go somewhere else, but allow the agriculture to grow in a comfortable way, we are looking for that kind of people. Because this is what is the next step is about. Water purification systems. Contamination of the waters is one of the biggest problems. We need a specialist who can specifically design a magra power level that can extract different things from waters. We see contaminated waters across the world. Now, it can, the, the technology is, what literally you got to do is very simple. And that is, you have to come up with a system, which when you put it in work, it creates, I can go, it creates a gravitational magnetic field around it, that that gravitational magnetic field can pick up any contamination from a distance. This is the new technology, this is how it's supposed to work. And if you can understand it, this is what we are looking for. We are not looking for new chemistry, chemical solutions. We are looking for new understanding of that you can create a gravitational magnetic field system that, for example, can take cesium out of anything, can take copper contamination out of the water, that you can understand the gravitational magnetic field of your system matches the gravitational magnetic field of the contamination. This is the new way to work. We are not looking for chemical binding and the rest. This is the matter state. It's very uh, simple to understand. We are looking for the strength measurement of magnet for any material. We are looking for a magnet of arsenic in the water that you can attract itself to it. We are looking for a magnet of radioactive materials in the water to attract with it. You understand this will come a lot easier. You can sometimes change it, but this is what we are looking a new plasma scientist. What happens? All you're going to be left with is reservoir of the material you have collected in this pot. Now, Instead of having all the radioactive material, let's say in a lake, we can collect them specifically, and then we have 
a bank of new materials. We can separate it. Water contamination. We are looking for scientists who can help us to build the new earthquake systems using MAGRAF technology. What does this mean? At the moment, if you are a civil engineer, you know how to start the vibration from the earth when you construct a building. Breathing on the path of science, just dipped by the magnets. So, what we need, we need what we call gravitational magnetic field shock absorbers. What you need to do, you need to create plates, more or less, which are nano-coated or gans-coated, that the absorption from the shocks is absorbed as a field within the layers. This is part of the priority. We just heard that Nepal had a very bad earthquake in April. A lot of people got hurt. And months down the road, nobody has done anything about it. What is looking for, what we need, is very, very simple. You have seen the magnetic pads, the health pads. There's one here, so there was one here. The health pads. is a magnetic plate. We need layers of magnetic plates, which they create gravitational magnetic field of the Earth replication, and they can turn it back on itself. These are very simple things. These are the gaps in the knowledge for the use on this planet. So, what you do, when you build a building, at the moment, you put what they call a waterproof bed. This waterproof bed, now, with the technology we have, should be easy to become vibration absorption too. That you absorb the energy of the vibration in nano layers, in the Gans layers. So the building does not shake. If the building absorbs, the layers absorbs the uh, vibration through nano layers, the brickwork above does not come to end. These are the people with our line of thinking we are looking for to join us in January. We are looking for health sections, where the new, what we thought, dialysis machines using nanomaterial gap can be used for replacement of laborious hours and hours of sitting every day in hospitals or on the dialysis machines. Systems can be made with a filtering with a gap. Don't forget what I told you the first time people could see this by the diamond dealers of Antwerp Bors, where they saw the gaps in the material and they said it's like a sieve. Now you can measure the size of this gap and how you want it to be. What do you want to absorb? 11, 9 is for the red blood cell. 11 for 8, that you can filter any 8 cell. Now, with different materials, you can create a space capping. This is what the plasma technology is about. We need to understand how plasma can be worked. A few thousand 
pieces will cost less than a few dollars, but it changes a lot of lives. Don't forget what I explained to you very recently, that we just put this size plate, nano-coated, in a pool, and we see no algae. So, is this a way to create a condition that water contaminations can be sorted? Are we selling these nano-coated plates, which is going out of here, like what we've done with copper wire for 100 years? Just one nano-coating, where they have different application forms. So, the open, the center is open for research, but by you, and uh, we're not looking at no PhDs, because we haven't issued any PhDs yet. And I don't think any institute of the Keshe Foundation ever will give any degrees. You have masters, and the masters we call it means you have mastered the art of plasma. Not master, as a master, you have a degree. You master the art of plasma, you can serve humanity, and that's all it counts. Any questions? Yes. Uh, microphone. Pardon? Your battery, hold on to it till it goes green. Yes. I said we can hang them in the fish tanks because fish tanks every month they have to clean to of algae. Oh, yes. But don't forget the trick. Try it at home. You have a fish tank. Yes. Is it the one mermaid in it or no mermaid in it? Uh, my son's mermaid. <laughs> Your son is a mermaid. Remember the test we did? For Fukushima, you remember in the Sansano, yes. we took the the what do you call it, the top holes, the little frogs, and we put them in the bucket. They were alive because we had to send the units to Fukushima for testing. Uh, they were alive when we gave them the CO2. The legs came out. We reported some deformities. When we put the guns, they died. Guns of copper, they died very quickly. You have to stop if you're putting. This is what we done in the pool, this nano-coated copper is in a plastic bag, sealed plastic bag, where the fields of the copper are interacting across the pool. So, when you put the copper plate in the fish pond, if you don't want to have one of those, what they call the suckers, they suck clean the windows, the window cleaners, make sure the, what do you call it, the copper plate is fully covered, because if it leaks, no fish. I know that, because we fed uh, uh, copper gans into a fog uh, container in one. Pardon? That's why they died. You did that? Yes, we did. One with the CO2, one with the copper. Which the yeah. copper we... It the one we fed the copper, animals died very quickly yeah. within a day. But CO2... The CO2, CO2 they get the energy from it. There was no problem. So, make sure, maybe, now we can produce antifungus units, even for the home. Are these copper plates? a way to uh, destroy fungi at home. It's one of the biggest problems. Old people don't like to have the window open, especially in the bathrooms, especially in the winter time. And they try to keep everything tight, that everything stays in. It happened to my father, I nearly lost him last year because of this. And the fungus managed to get behind the window, and he went in his lung. Maybe this is a way to do it. We sell patches, you can put two or three around in the house, and we don't see no fungus. I want to try this, because I know where I can go to.
there's always looking how it can be done. We have uh, about a thousand nano plates, copper plates, somewhere in the foundation. It's going. Uh, Giovanni, are those thousand plates been organized that you can go to the factory? Or we still have a hassle with it? Please speak. Please speak. Um, this morning, as you know, hopefully tomorrow the pads are in the way to the factory. Today, probably today. I, this morning, I spoke with the factory. 10,000 more pads are on the way to Italy, arriving uh, early November. So we have uh, the back of 15,000, 16,000 uh, pads, health pads, to be distributed in Europe. We are ready to dispatch. Next, second week of November, we have 10,000 pads, what do you call pens, available for distribution. The minute they are finished, they go on the website. So, you see, we are looking to expand the knowledge, and there's another wild west, is understanding the new way to do it. Mr. Cash? Yes? Hello there. I'm calling you from Bulgaria, and I've been following you over YouTube for the past couple of days and before and i just installed zoom so i'm a bit new here i just want to ask you a question have you ever considered making the guns with silver water silver water is the you know what water? pure Sorry. water silver water yeah silver water silver water yeah let, let, let me start my video and i'll show you the device with which you make silver water okay this is the device. Uh, it's it's uh, Dr. Dr. Silver 101 plus. You just fill the bucket with uh, the beacon, or, sorry, or a bucket with water, say one liter. Just place the device inside and mm -hmm. squeeze it on the top. And it starts an electrolysis process via a uh, silver electrode which releases silver ions in the water this way you add to the guns you said use copper you use zinc uh, put a 1.5 volts under 0.5 amps which could be driven from a normal battery and this is the same thing but add silver to the mixture and you know this, this equipment has been has created a huge controversy with the uh, World Health Organization. It was tested in respect to E. coli and Ebola in uh, West Africa. It won't uh, help, sorry. Pardon? It won't help for Ebola, but uh, it actually kills pathogens like fungus and bacteria in human, in people. Yes. And that's why in India, in the river Int and Gang, people, uh, People go and uh, bait, bait themselves with this water and they never suffer. Yes, I am aware of this. I do not know how it works. Is is scientific base behind it. I came across it because, as you know, we submitted CO2 GANs for E. coli and Ebola mm -hmm. to, this, um, to the uh, South University of Sierra Leone, which we collaborate with. And they took the material to the office of the president of Sierra Leone and World Health, Health Organizations confiscated everything. And the scientists were told they cannot collaborate with Cash Foundation in this matter. But they came back to the laboratory in South, uh, what do you call it, um, Sierra Leone University. And they reset up the whole thing and they tried it with E. coli. And they saw it 100% reduction, which we reported. These kind of material processes, if it's plasmatic, it is. I've never looked into it. That's how I came across it to know, and I know the person who was trying to. Uh, when, when, you, when you said wash the liquid with the, 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 the ionized water uh, to get rid of the salt, 
uh, this this will help as well and i'm actually going to experiment with it uh in the couple in the coming two two, two three days so it's um, it's a part of the technology i do not understand it i've never investigated it deep enough but that's how i came across it apparently it's been around for a long time it's not something new i, I know it's been used in ancient times no, no, not really, even today, because I started alternative clinics for curing people uh, are over Europe, around Europe, and yeah. uh, it works. But if you, if you read some articles about it, the knowledge in this system you are showing is known uh, technology. It's been used a long time. Yeah, but yeah. it will help for the guns because uh, copper, uh, zinc plus silver works. Silver and copper are a way that the energy links up with dispersing the condition for existence of microbes. It, they create, in certain position condition, a, an environment in a way that, um, if you look at it, does not allow the present gaps in the structure to uh, create a field that anything can receive energy. They take all the energy, that's how it works. It's not that the copper guns or what you call silver water are magic. The understanding from what we see in the copper is that even the copper which is put on the wall instantaneously gets oxidized and partially becomes nano layer. They create a nano structure that they create a field that nothing can be attached to it. And that's how it works. Okay, thank you very much. And thank you for everything you're doing. Thank you very much. Because yeah. if you understand, the latest, uh, what do you call it, uh, operating rooms in the most advanced hospitals in the world now, they use only copper. Everything has to be made of copper. Because the copper creates this stopgap to be filled magnetic gravitationally and nothing can attach itself to it. Because if you now take aluminium, copper, or whatever, and change the operating rooms. Just take a cling film, what do you call it, the aluminium foil films, and put it in the operating room, and just uh, put a caustic on it, nano coated, you find the same proposition. You create a magnetic field which nothing can attach itself to it. It's Teflon condition, but you create a plasmatic Teflon. and it cannot go, nothing can go wrong with it. We understand this, this is part of the technology, we understand fully. You don't create a, uh, you create, you don't create a condition that the fields, entities like bacteria and microbes uh, and the other things which have a COH connection can exist in. You create a field which, have a look at the structure, you understand why. Understand the gravitational magnetic field of how life attaches itself to amino acid. And then when you use a copper in gravitational magnetic field, it creates a condition that it literally expands the fields and fields, and that gap separation allows no new life, extra strength to achieve, to, to sustain life. What's the time? Shall we call it the lunch time? One o'clock? Almost, yeah. Okay, we come back at two, we call it the day for this morning, and 
we go, what I would like to teach, or at least to discuss this afternoon, because I've received some communication, people like to know a little bit more. What is the status of the soul in respect to the emotional part of the man? And somebody has asked us a few times, can you explain the status of the soul of the Prophet of God in respect to humanity? We try to explain this, that you understand, the way we look at it. It's for you to decide. Thank you very much for this morning. And sorry about the interruption. It's all to do with the physicality of the internet. Thank you, Mr. You got emotional a little bit. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Cash. Okay, thank you, Mr. Cash. Okay, that's the end of the 85th the Knowledge Seekers Workshop. And we'll be um, putting a more uh, complete workshop up on the live stream, which was uh, fragmented today. Um, we'll edit a, a fuller uh, version, complete version, get that up soon. Um, that's about it. We have the um, acknowledgements at the end here for the music that's uh, been donated. And we appreciate that. And any other help that can be donated for the Cash Foundation at this point is also appreciated. We do need help. A lot of action. Okay, thank you, everybody. And we'll close the live stream.